I'm James. And I'm Dan. We're the Ragmuffins. And we're having another chat with Sarah and Kai from Takedown Festival regarding next year's festival. It's happening on the 13th and 14th of April 2024. Get your tickets now and enjoy this little chat with them. So we're the Ragmuffins. We're joined once again by Sarah and Kai from Takedown Festival. How are we doing, guys? Good, good. How are you guys? Awesome. Very well, thank yeah, you. Very good. Well, before we get started on next year, we wanted to take a little bit look back again on uh, 2023 um, and sort of take another look back on, on the big return. We've spoken to you already. Um, but what are the key moments and memories that you kind of take from, from this year's festival? Oh, God. It, for us, it just went by in a blur because we were just every, trying to be everywhere all at once. And um, I think the valuable lesson we learned for 2024 is we're just going to sack ourselves from all jobs and just make <laughs> sure that we're present. I remember bumping into you guys, which was great in the VIP area. And actually, when we talk about the VIP area, that for me was brilliant to see those acoustic sets that we wouldn't normally get to see were really quite special, um, especially the Skin Dread one, which I absolutely Oh, that loved. was amazing. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of VIP areas at festivals that kind of just seem to be you get an extra bar that maybe has a bit less of a queue. You maybe get sort of an outdoor festival. You have some hay bales or something to sit on in like a quiet area. But the takedown VIP section seems to just have a little bit of, of extra stuff to it. Ah, thanks. Yeah, we worked really hard on that. It was the first time we'd ever offered anything like that. We wanted to make it special. And it will be back for 2024 as well. So um, we're just carefully curating who we're going to have performing what and on what day. Um, and hopefully we'll get an announcement out about that shortly. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, very mm -hmm. exciting. So already there, straight into 2024 next year, 13th to 14th of April, the first ever time doing two days back at Portsmouth Guildhall. How has it been in the preparations? Is it double the workload, but then maybe double the amount of bands you can kind of look to introduce and bring into it? How's that been bringing it all together? It's been a lot of work. I think for us, along with a lot of other major festivals, we've really struggled um, with the act. So we came out of the pandemic last year, everybody wanted to play. So we had a surplus of bands available that we could book. And, you know, the booking process was relatively easy. 2024 has been a lot harder, hasn't it? It has been quite tricky, yeah. So all those bands that were performing last year are now on album cycle. Um, so they're not necessarily touring. So you've got a limited pool that you can draw upon. And then unfortunately, um, agents being agents have realised that and are upping fees. So it's been quite a logistical, um, not nightmare, but it's just been definitely more challenging this yeah, year. It's hasn't been it? hard work between availability and uh, embargoes uh, by other festivals as well. It's been quite a struggle to get the top line bands, but I think we pulled it off. Yeah, I, I I don't think we're alone in that as well. I've heard no. Andy Copy say Andy Copping saying that he's had problems with it when he looked at the download lineup. So I'd, you know, it's yeah, two thousand trees, uh, Slam Dunk, a few of them have said similar things. I think I saw with Andy in particular, He, I think he said he usually approaches like six or seven bands for the headliner act. And I think he went to like 21 for next year in particular. So you're seeing straight away that, that increase in that demand for it straight away in particular. Yeah, absolutely. That's been the biggest problem. Everything else has been relatively smooth, Touchwood, so far. Yes. Yeah, I think we've learned a lot from year one uh, and we're coming back with a, with an event that people are now familiar with again as well, which has been uh, massively helpful. So we're not going into it new new city new venue it, this is you know we know what we're booking into now and we know how we're going to improve on the last one so speaking of booking bands you've got uh dinosaur pile up and creeper headlining next year's festival what is it about those two bands in particular that kind of drew you to them and, and made you decide to put them as the uh the big names at the top of the poster so Creeper is an easy one for me. I'm a dirty old goth and they tickle my dirty old goth bone. So um, for me, they sound like Meatloaf, which I loved as a kid growing up watching Rocky Horror Picture Show. And they're also sort of crossed with Sisters of Mercy. So that was an absolute no brainer. They've been on heavy rotation. Um, so I was desperate to work from them with them. They're local lads as well. Um, they're from Southampton originally. Kai's worked with them in various other forms and various other yeah, bands. Yeah, they played Takedown before. Yeah. They, were, they were a baby band on Takedown about a decade ago, I think. Wow. So they, for me, I was all over it. I absolutely wanted them and had to have them. Dinosaur Pilot was more your thing, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you've got to look at the whole thing sort of stylistically as well, including Kick Capitchi and uh, Terrorvision in the way that we're thinking. Of course, obviously having two days with... Um, 
I decided it was uh, we didn't want to just do more of the same. So I've kind of broadened the scope of uh, of the genres that we're booking. Saturday's a uh, similar sort of vibe, more kind of contemporary, uh, newer acts. Um, and then on the Sunday, I wanted to take a more of a kind of a rock vibe. And it's kind of two sides of that coin, really, the classic rock and new wave of kind of British hard rock. And then on the other hand, more sort of, almost I suppose grunge alternative rock styles on the on the main stage as well nice I mean very very strong headliners I think anyway um but what I want to do is from the top bands up there to look at some of these smaller bands in particular ones coming through with a takedown showcase uh how has the process been with all of that what's been the benefits in particular and is it something you're going to look to continue upon years so we're absolutely going to continue it going forward. This was like my pet project um, for 2023, 2024. Um, it has been a labour of love and it is tough. So we wanted, we've always wanted to be able to give back to the local scene. It's something we feel really passionate about because if you don't nurture that talent from the bottom up, where are your next lot of headliners going to come from? Um, so absolutely wanted to get involved with local bands. Um, there has been some challenges around... Um, what is and isn't acceptable from a booking perspective and what bands are expecting to receive. So um, we find a lot with local bands that, um, and it's not just systemic of where we're based, that they, it's almost an entitlement and it sounds horrible saying this, but we get bands that have got no track record, no touring history. Yes, they're great at socials, but they haven't done particularly much from a live perspective. And they are expecting to just go straight onto the bill at Takedown. And that's not how, how we can operate as a festival because you know we want people to buy tickets. To buy tickets, you need to have been able to have seen or heard of that band previously and just having good socials isn't enough. So we've had a lot of um, to and fro with some local acts around what is and isn't feasible from the process and how we can make it work for everybody. And actually the bands that are coming through and have made it through to the heats are absolutely killing it. We had a heat this week in Southampton and it was down to like two or three points, wasn't it, for the for the winners? It it was so close that competition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean the whole process is a bit tricky really. I mean uh, the the battle of the bands concept is that I don't really like to look at art as competitive in any way however in order to do this and get some shows into grassroots venues and give some opportunities to, to local artists it does need to be some sort of structure to it um, and this is packed out venues in Bournemouth, Portsmouth, Southampton, uh, the Isle of Wight. Yeah yeah, uh, sure so, yeah it's been uh, it, it's been great and we've seen bands from far and wide and some of the some of the ones coming through have been absolutely fantastic every bit as good as their uh, you know more well-known signed counterparts. So I get tying in with the showcase really um what kind of qualities do you look for in these sort of smaller bands when you decide to kind of give them the chance and give them the jump to to play the main festival? So we want them to be good all-rounders. Um, we don't necessarily have to like their music particularly. Um, we want them to be uh, great at socials, have some sort of touring history, so prove that they've actually performed, have links to their socials and links to their um, EPK, so their history, their backstory, and all of that good stuff. And actually the way that we did the application process, we partnered with a company called Amplead, um, where we were able to design a bespoke system that made sure anybody that wanted to enter had to put in the criteria that we needed. So actually when it came to reviewing it, although we had hundreds of submissions who were of excellent quality, to pick out the ones that we really wanted was actually quite easy because They'd, they'd given us everything that we needed and, and we needed to know about them. Yeah, it's not, not just about the music. Obviously, there was some great music coming through, but it's about presentation. It's about self-promotion. Uh, we know in this kind of age of Spotify and social media that, uh, unfortunately, those days of uh, some uh, you know, talent scout wandering into a pub and spotting the next Led Zeppelin are, are long gone. They're yeah. going to wait until you've got 300,000 listeners on Spotify and uh, you know, and a huge amount of followers anyway, and and, and we obviously we don't need that many, but we're looking for that sort of uh, yeah, that ability as well. 
Now, with festivals in general, I think it's a fantastic way to discover new bands. Uh, from one that's going to be on next year in particular for me is Black Gold. Uh, stumbling into a tent a download earlier this year, finding them, discovering them, then going to 2000 Trees and seeing them, I wanting to go and actually watch them. They're a band in particular for me that I'm really excited to come and see at Takedown next year. So out of all that lineup on there, who are the ones you're most excited to look forward to bringing to Portsmouth, to having on those stages and to kind of being at Takedown Festival? Uh, for me, it's Swarm Six. So they are a hitching based trap metal band. So they are really pushing the genres, like totally push it. Look like Marilyn Manson, look like Big Scary Goss, but are doing this drill and this trap metal crossover. They're amazing. And they're really polished in their live performance. And then um, Serena from Face the Wolves, they are everywhere at the moment and they're amazing. And she is so talented on an individual level. She does everything from the bottom up. She's involved in all of the processes from the merch to to the whole lot she doesn't there's not a stone unturned with her she's amazing how about you um so probably one of my favorite smaller bands uh i can't say anything about because they're being added on the um 8th of december which i'm Ooh. quite excited about I've, I've dragged someone out of retirement for a uh for a small show i say retirement they've, they've been on hi hiatus for a while okay. and they're, they're coming back for this show uh so that's exciting uh you'll see soon who that might be otherwise um i'm quite looking forward to we've got some proper kind of stoner doom on some of the stages i'm quite looking forward to getting uh properly riffed by bands like desert storm and thum so you say 8th of december the next announcement is that the final announcement is that everything complete do we get day splits on there as well Hopefully. Yeah. We're just assuming certain people pull their fingers out of their bottoms. <laughs> uh, we should be ready with everything to go then. Otherwise, there might be some stragglers. But uh, but by and large, yeah, 8th of December is day splits, yeah. stage splits and final bands. Wonderful. Amazing. So I guess the floor is yours now. One last question. Why should people come to Takedown Festival next year? Oh, gosh. I think um, for me personally, I like to think of it as probably one of the most inclusive festivals out there. This year, we're really pushing the boundaries on the rock and metal genre. Um, we are um, hopefully covering just about every single subgenre, although I, it was highlighted to me that we've missed out a bit of deathcore. So maybe we need to add that in for the eighth announcement. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> um but yeah just Kai, like, Kai's shaking his head there I don't think you saw that Sarah <laughs> he listens to prog so don't... I could do that as well I'm down for a bit of a bit of, we get we'll have everything yeah well we're trying to we're trying to have as broad a scope as we possibly can um hopefully it'll be a great day again or a great couple of days like we had this year and we really just want everybody to come along and enjoy themselves and have a great time we had so much great feedback from this year with the bands loving it, the fans loving it, and everybody that worked on the festival loved it as well. So more of the same, please. I think we can attest to that as well, can't we? Oh, definitely, yeah. We had a great time. So there's uh, 78 bands. At the moment. And uh, I suppose including the VIP lounge, there'll be 96 performances overall wow. across the weekend. So uh, I'd say that's pretty good value for money, if nothing else. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, I think we're, well, we're excited for next year. Um, you've sold us anyway beforehand. It was a fantastic time earlier this year. Looking forward to it next year. Uh, thank you very much for your time and we'll see you there. Great. Thanks. Cheers, guys.